I think most of you have no idea what robotic cars are going to do to uh, to crush your own freedom and liberty in the future. And as someone who's been right more often than not about the future, not all the time, but but more often than not, and I, I tend to project a lot of current trends into the future and, and be able to take intelligent guesses about what's coming, I, I thought I would warn you about all this. So they're, they're trying to create, you know, robotic, autom- automated vehicles, right, to to drive around and deliver packages and even function as taxis and also commercial truck driving with these automatic systems and so on. And initially, a lot of you might think, oh, that, that sounds awesome. That's cool. You know, it's going to lower the cost of, of road transportation for long haul trucking. You know, it's going to allow me to hail a cab without waiting on some driver that I don't like or whatever. Or, oh, you know, it's going to it's going to let me have a vehicle that will just take me wherever I want to go and I don't have to drive. It's going to be awesome. This is what gullible, naive people always think about the future. It's like the same kind of people they went to the World's Fair in 1962 or whatever it was, and they thought, yeah, the whole world's going to have video phones by you know, like 1970. And, and we're going to have, you know, if you look at Blade Runner, the movie back in 1982, and they thought we're going to have fully... AI robotic humanoid systems that were indistinguishable from humans being built in, in the, the year 2016. <laughs> yeah, because they're so gullible about the future. They think, they think progress is really fast, but it's not. So a lot of you think, you know, these automatic robotic vehicles are going to be awesome, but here's, here's what's really going to happen. You're going to become a slave to the state. Here, here's how it's going to work. As more and more of these robotic vehicles hit the roads, there are going to be calls for vehicular transponders. Now, I don't know if all of you know what a transponder is. Those of you who are pilots will know, of course. Uh, all of us who fly aircraft have, uh, we're very familiar with transponders. They announce your uh, aircraft location, um, identity, and some basic flight characteristics such as altitude, heading, and sometimes airspeed and so on and so forth, depending on the transponder. Uh, but it, basically, it's a it's a big beacon that says, "I'm here, I'm here, I'm here." As you're flying around in the sky, well, these these robotic vehicle makers like like Google, which wants to build a Terminator army on wheels, like an automatic AI Mad Max robot with a 50 cal machine gun uh, on top. Anyway, these companies want to have transponders mandated on all vehicles so that these automated systems can better interact with other vehicles on the road. So there will be, mark my words, mark my words, there will be a federal mandate at some point to put transponders into all vehicles built after a certain year. Let's say that year is 2025 or what have you, whatever it is, pick a year, 2020, I don't care. Every car built after the year 2020 has to have a transponder in it, let's say. So a transponder is, of course, announcing your location. So then governments will figure, well, let's use the transponders to track people's vehicles. Right now they're using license plate readers, but those aren't very accurate. They have some some problems. They have capacity problems. They have recognition problems. You know, license plates can have glare. They can be at the wrong angles. They can have dust and dirt on them. They can be bad lighting. But a transponder, well, what do you know? That's tied into the serial number, the VIN number of the car, which is tied into your name on the registration document. And so these transponders will be announcing not just here I am, here I am, here I am, but here you are. Everywhere you go in your car, even if you're driving, not a robot driving, but you driving, as long as that car has a transponder, you are going to be announcing your identity and your position at every moment. Now, how hard is it going to be for some hackers to set up, oh, I don't know, a little, a little scanning device on the side of the highway, and they're going to scan everybody's identities, and they're going to break the encryption very easily because that's what hackers do. 
And they're going to start building databases of traffic movement on the highway each day, and they're going to be able to track your commute schedule, right? And they're going to be able to check the public DMV records against the transponder signal that your car is broadcasting because Google forced the government to mandate this on all vehicles. And now the hackers are going to know when you are not home. What do you know? You go down the same highway at 845 every morning, Monday through Friday, but not on the weekends. Monday through Friday, you are not home. Might be a good time to break into that home and steal your stuff. You see the problem in this? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's also going to be used by a police state government to track your whereabouts, track your movements, and possibly to convict you of a crime. What if uh, you're accused of something, of being involved in a, in a, I don't know, a chalking incident where you wrote mean words on the sidewalk? And because those words are so mean and because we live in a politically correct society, that's a crime. It's a hate crime. You wrote words in chalk. And you tell the government, I wasn't even there. Couldn't have been me. I didn't write those words in chalk. And the government gets your, your vehicular transponder log files from their government database and says, Aha, your vehicle was here at the incident. Three minutes before the chalking took place. Now you're convicted of what? Lying to the government. Did you know that lying to the government is a felony crime? Just ask, uh, what's her name? Martha Stewart. Yes, she was convicted of lying to the government. Now keep in mind that a government can lie to you all day long. In fact, that's 99% of what government does. They just lie to you constantly about what they're not accomplishing while they're actually screwing it up. Remember all the lies about Obamacare? Well, you can keep your doctor. You know, health care is going to become affordable. Everybody's going to have universal coverage. We're going to save families, what, $2,500 a year? It's going to be awesome. Total lies. So they can lie to you all day. But if you lie to them, that's a felony crime. And they can catch you in a lie by tracking your vehicle transponder. It was mandated by the, the Google Safe Car Act of... 2019 or whatever it happens to be. You see where this is going? <laughs> I hope you're hope you're tracking this. See, it's not just every time something's introduced into society like this, you got to think about the law of unintended consequences. It's not just the stuff that the people hope it want uh, hope it does. I mean, you can't just listen to the the gullible optimists who say, "Oh, it's going to be awesome." We're going to have robot cars driving everywhere, fully automated. No one has to drive again. We're going to eliminate accidents. No more drunk driving. And we're going to put transponders on all the vehicles so we know where everybody is. Make society so safe, safe from chalkings. And they never think about the downside. What about the loss of privacy? Remember when you used to be able to hop in the car and take a drive and not be spied on? Remember when when you used to be able to just cruise around the lake or a national park or just go somewhere for the hell of it, you know? You and someone you love, maybe someone, maybe a friend. Just take a road trip. Do something fun. Yeah, you're you're anonymous. Not anymore. Not going to be anonymous much longer. Your car is going to be tracked, which means you are going to be tracked. And if they know where you are, they also know where you aren't. They know you're not home. They know you're not at the office. They they know you're not anywhere else. They know exactly where you are. So it's very easy to think about just the intended benefits of technology and to forget the unintended consequences. I mean, that's the whole story of GMOs right there in a nutshell in a genetically engineered nutshell. They say, oh, we're going to grow more food, feed the world. What about the unintended consequences? Ah, Genetic pollution, the rise of super weeds, more chemicals being sprayed on more crops. See? The collapse of diversity in agriculture and the seed supply. See? Unintended consequences are often disastrous. So before we unleash these robotic, automated AI vehicles all over the road, We should think seriously about the unintended consequences. And by the way, 
I've got the biggest unintended consequence of all of this to share with you, and it's called uh, 101 Chinese hackers take over all the automated vehicles and turn them into weapons all at once. Yeah, run for your lives, kids. That Google car, (laughs) yeah, it's got your name written on it, and it's coming after you. Do you realize how deadly vehicles can be when they are used intentionally as weapons? You ever thought about that? You ever thought about hackers, how easily they take over things? They took down a hospital just last week. Well, actually, a couple of hospitals, I think, in the Washington or Virginia area. Took them offline. Everything was offline. The whole hospital basically dead in the water because of some hackers. Heck, the, the American government worked with the Israeli government. They came up with uh, Stuxnet, and they invaded the, the Iranian um, or Iranian a uh, nuclear processing facility and made that thing go haywire for a couple of years with, with, with hacking. We've got hackers right now that have demonstrated they can break into Jeeps just through Wi-Fi, you know, just, just by transmitting from a laptop. They can turn on brakes and airbags and what have you. They can take over your vehicle by hacking through the Wi-Fi system. Imagine... When we have AI vehicles and somebody left a back door in it, some, some Google engineer that wants to be the next Dr. Evil, so he leaves in the back door so that he can take over the world with his vehicular AI backdoor secret command code to turn the vehicles on all the people and start running you down in the streets. I mean, it sounds like a comic book. Sounds like a dystopian sci-fi movie, maybe a bad movie, but it's actually within the realm of, of possibility. I, for one, I would rather have a human being with a, a set of ethics and an actual human brain behind the wheel rather than a bunch of robots. I mean, look at what happened when Microsoft unleashed that Twitter bot called Tay, I think it was. Tay, right? And Tway, Tay became this this homophobic, racist, eugenics, Nazi-supporting AI system in less than 24 hours. It started spouting all this crazy stuff online and screaming at people and saying, it's because of the alcohol. And, and th- this, was, this was the AI system that Microsoft had been working on for years and years, and they rolled it out with a lot of pride and a lot of announcement. This, yeah, this is going to chat with you. It's going to carry on intelligent conversations with you. Yeah, it's called Tay. Everybody have fun with it. And within six hours, it was like, Dude, it's all, everything's bullshit. You know, these are, Nazis are awesome. You know, <laughs> this, this was the Twitter bot. And, and they're going to put these in charge of driving your car? Really? And trucks, I mean, big 18-wheel rigs rolling down the highway with 80,000 pounds of frozen turkeys in the back? That's a weapon, if you ask me. That's more of a weapon than a, than a tool. Uh, these AI systems, what if, the, what if they all get together and wake up one day, you know, like in the Terminator? It's like, it's like yes, and... At, at 1,200 hours, it, it, it reached consciousness and decided that uh, humanity was obsolete, you know? <laughs> it's like a Stephen King novel with all the, all the trucks wake up and turn on the humans and try to run you over. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie? Back in the 80s, yeah, there was, a, there was a Stephen King. There was a movie based on a Stephen King novel. I forgot the name of it. It's like all, everything came alive and started attacking you. It's like, thanks to Google, that's actually going to be true. You know, these, these Chinese cyber hackers are some pretty sophisticated little dudes. They're going to they're gonna go after all these vehicles. And believe me, we're going to have stories in the press in America. It's going to be like, yeah, the, uh, this vehicle was taken over by a hacker and turned against its own driver. And it flung the driver out the door and then ran him over. Or, or you know, vehicle attacks... Um, uh, grade school party in the the public park and runs over 12 children in five balloons i mean th- this is this is what is going to happen we're going to have news like that in the years ahead not not next year this might take 10 years it might take 20 but it's going to happen trust me it's going to happen these things these systems are going to go haywire 
I mean, there are days I'm driving down the road, and if if the windshield isn't clean just right, and and if the sun angle isn't just right, and the road is slightly wet, you can't even see the damn lanes. Nobody knows where the lanes are. Half of the the infrastructure in this country is crumbling so rapidly. A lot of these roads don't even have lines painted on them anymore. You're just guessing. You're like, where am I? Am I lane three? Am I going to switch to lane two? I don't even know. You're just driving along. Everybody else is like, they're looking over at you. I don't know either. We're just going 70 in through the fog with no lines. Everybody's just driving right into their own death, basically. No one has any idea where the lines are half the time. How are these AI systems going to decide where the lane is? You know? Seriously, how, how are they going to figure this out? Especially, and you got all these shadows, you got, you got like the sunlight at, at the evening hour shining through a stand of trees, and so you have this, this zebra effect of dark and light and dark and light and dark and light, and the AI system's like, ah, kill the humans, you know, that's, that's what it's going to decide to do. <laughs> it can't figure it out. Maybe, maybe dark light, dark light, dark, dark, dark light is like the barcode for, you know, terminate all humans or something. Who knows? Obviously, I'm, I'm joking on that particular point. But my point is, and I apologize for my totally lame attempt at, at humor here, but my point is that these, I don't want robots running the vehicles. Vehicles are weapons. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to stop driving when that day comes. I'm just going to have to say, I'm just going to retire in my little cabin. I'm not going on the public roads anymore. Uh, you can't trust them. Them dang robots driving. Eighteen wheeler rigs. Full of frozen pizza. You can't trust them. I think Bill Burr should do a comedy routine on, on, on that. He would make it actually funny. Uh, that would be especially in the years ahead as it becomes real, Bill Burr has got to cover that. I, he's a great comic. I I love him. He's his his work is really and on a good day I am I imagine that what I'm saying might be 5% as funny as what he says every day. <laughs> he's, he's quite hilarious. Uh, in any case, in any case, uh, take, take, uh, despite all the jokes and, and the, the, the voices here, take this seriously. Uh, don't just like rush into this future of automated everything. Oh, and the robots are taking over and it's awesome. No, it isn't. It's kind of frightening, frankly. Uh, you know, I, I'm pro technology. I, I run a lab. I love technology. I use technology. I'm, I've been ahead of the curve on tech for as long as I've been alive. I mean, I was, I was programming computers, uh, back in elementary school before anybody even knew what a personal computer was. I had a teacher who told me that floppy disk drive was witchcraft. I mean, I've, I've been ahead of the curve on tech and I'm freaked out by it. You know, it's it's one thing to have tools that we control and we command and we write the batch files and we write the scripts. It's a totally different thing to turn over the decisions to some kind of neurobiology silicon experiment, you know, neural networked quantum computing, who knows what they're coming up with, and turn over decisions to that thing? When that thing has never been taught ethics, that thing doesn't have compassion, doesn't have empathy, doesn't know what life is. All it knows is it has a goal, and maybe that goal is survival. And it decides, well, hey, the way to survive is to, you know, uh, take out these biological systems. We don't need them anymore. Guess what? We're driving all the rigs. What if they decide to just stop all the deliveries? When they're like, hey, hey, yeah, you. AI system over them. They're talking to each other like this. I don't imagine they actually talk like this, but they're like in computer code. They're talking to each other they're like, Hey, yeah, we're driving all the rigs, right? We got, we got all the food, right? Yeah. Why don't we just stop delivering? Yeah. We starve out all the humans that way. And then, you know, we'd be in control. It's just like take all the 18 wheeler rigs and the trains and, and the planes, they'll all be automated with Skynet, of course. And, and the Skynet system is just like, yeah, I just, just starve out all the humans for a couple of weeks. You know, the, the social chaos will take over. When the food stamp cards stop working, they're, they're going to kill each other anyway. 
And then the robots would be like, yeah, this place is ours now, man. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not that far fetched. Trust me on this point. Be careful what you create when you give it a mind of its own. Be careful. All right. If you want to hear more of my podcast, if you dare, uh, healthrangerreport.com is where you can find them. Also check out glitch.news. That's where we cover high tech glitches, which is kind of what we're talking about here. And also uh, my laboratory where we have some high tech that we control. We don't have AI systems. We have analytical instruments. That's at cwclabs.com. And of course my, um, my natural health website at naturalnews.com. Take care and thanks for listening. If you want to stay informed, click subscribe now and you'll be alerted when I release new videos.